Okay guys, hobby logger here. I think you can tell I'm a little excited. I got pawing around through the uh, cabinets today and years ago I bought a bunch of salvage stuff from a, a gasifier that was uh, actually a, a kiln for a, a lumber yard and they had a giant uh, gas fire there which provided all the heat for the kiln and in part of their uh, collection of things to keep everything going smoothly they had this little item and I don't really know what the heck it is except that I think I can use it and after watching uh, um, a video from the Drizzler uh, gasifier page there and speaking with the um, Luke and whatnot on the condition of the ember bed being so important with gasification and their extremely long runs that they've been getting on their thing. I'm starting to head off in that kind of direction as to keeping a, uh, an ember bed that is very, very stable. Um, and I think what's uh, going to have to happen is that um, our great shaker that we have there I think we're a little overpowered on it and, and I think all our filtration and everything else downstream is actually secondary um, and just a cover-up for all the mistreatment of the ember bed um, I'm really starting to get into the nitty-gritty of the that that side of it now so I'm I'm thinking that this little puppy here is going to be able to read the very very subtle and minute changes in the vacuum or pressure or negative pressure um, around the ember bed. Now, I'm not quite sure where to uh, install this. I'm going to check with uh, um, a friend of mine that just started getting into it a little bit there, Steve, the furnace man. And uh, I'm going to check with him. He's into this kind of calibration stuff. So, um, anyhow, this thing is super, super sensitive. I mean, you just touch it and the needle is good, bounces around and, and everything, so it's going to have to be a real stable platform. And it's calibrated um, to be absolutely vertical and up and down and everything right now. But um, I can just, just about touch this little thing here, and you can see the little pressure differences in the black needle there. As I just put my finger over the Thing. You can just see that needle pop a little bit, and that's not for moving the thing around. Um, I'm gonna just barely it now. It reads um, right now. It's this is the low pressure side, which I'm I'm thinking that's vacuum because I already tried it once and it certainly works. And the other and the top um, uh, part is uh, the pressure side. So <clears throat> if I can come up with two different readings um, from pressure and negative pressure somewhere around that ember bed I am kind of figuring that this needle is going to respond to those changes rather than just one over the other I think it's going to have to balance out um, so I'm, I'm not quite sure where to put this thing um, but on the back of it well anyhow I'm just going to very very slightly um, um, try to move this needle and I'll tell you what just my talking is enough and breathing across this thing I'm not even touching it and I don't know if you can you can see this thing or not but it's I just I'm breathing on it so, I mean this thing is absolutely so sensitive that it's scary it's a good thing. I, I might have to wear this all the time just to see if I'm still breathing. So on the back, so it's got these, it, it's an analog system. And on the back, it has all these little uh, things here. When it falls outside of the, uh, the needles and uh, the pressures, I'm thinking that this could be the trigger and the device which would turn on the shaker or the grate or anything if it falls somewhere outside of the range of this thing. Now there is an instruction book that's about the size of the Library of Congress. So I'm going to have to figure out what that is, but you know, I'm thinking this thing is the 
key. The silver bullet, guys. Let me know what you think.